What's up guys? We are going to do a little bit of a speed run. So I'm going to see the fastest I can code a Create React app uh, up and it's going to do a couple of things. It's going to have a login page, it's going to have a register page, and it's going to show some data on the screen. We're going to be using React Router, we're going to be using Apollo Client, and some other cool stuff. So I already have a GraphQL server up and running. If you want to grab that so you can follow along, Link is going to be in the description below. And let's just jump right into this. I'm going to start totally from scratch. Um, just going to chug through this fast, see how fast it takes to get that set up. Uh, I was tired of using Next.js. I'm just going to go back to the bread and butter of Create React app. I love it. It's just so nice. So I already have this guy installed. Uh, I'm just going to run him. So Create React app, let's see. What do we want to name this guy? Let's say, let's say Jello World for uh, GraphQL Hello World. Uh, and when that is done, we'll open it up and start coding that. I'm going to be doing it. I think I'm going to create this stuff with using Ant Design like I did in Next.js and just see if it's a little bit easier. I don't have to add a head every page. <laughs> That's a nice thing. And we're going to be using React Router. For our routing and we're going to use version 4 and we're also going to need Apollo client all these are and here's the order we're going to do things uh, I think we're going to set react router first then ant design then lastly Apollo client and Apollo client go to documentation site sweet we got react we're going to do the get started and React Router, nice. Ant Design. I think Ant Design should be fairly easy to install for Create React app. I, yep, it even has a thing in it. Perfect. So we just, I think I just have to import this CSS or create a CSS sheet. Oh wow, this thing is chugging along for a little bit. What we can do is actually open up a new tab. It's installing dependencies and stuff, but if I can still CD in there, so and I can open up Visual Studio Code and let that get started. All right, I like to put my Visual Studio Code in the middle, Chrome on the left, and now on the right. All right, source code is up. App CSS here. Um, actually, before I even do anything yarn add let's see make sure this is done okay it is done uh, so here I'm gonna CD just do npm start start up the server all right so now I'm gonna start adding dependencies I actually want to get this set up before react app I want to see if I can just import this directly from the JavaScript so we're gonna install ant D um, and yeah so it tells you to import it from JavaScript. I don't know if we're going to need that. Uh, it's registering service worker. I don't think we need that. That's for, uh, you know, what are they called? I forget what they're called. It's for offline applications or web apps. Uh, there's, a, there's a thing called Lighthouse that they use to check whether how good your app is. Lighthouse Google. Here it is. So this tool is what you can, oh here, there it is too. This tool called Lighthouse can be used to check how well your uh, application is doing. And I don't know what this is for, but this is a tangent. I forget what these things are called. There's a special name given to um, these type of websites. I want to see if I can see the name real quick. All right, whatever, we'll worry about that later. It doesn't matter. Okay. But anyway, I want to see if this will, if we can see something here. So coming into app.js here, and I'm just going to try this and see if it shows up. Don't care about you. All right, div, app, cool, button. Grab the button from Ant Design. Assuming this shows up, we're going to just wreak havoc on all the stuff they have there. 
I'm just going to cut down all the stuff he gives me. Um, and it should have opened up a tab, assuming it started up okay. Um, would you like to start it up on another port? Yes, please. Because we have our server running on localhost 3000. I'm really hoping this button shows up because then I don't have to put the important CSS so I can just get rid of that CSS file. And it does. Cool beans. So we imported everything just from the JavaScript. So I'm going to go ahead and delete index CSS, app CSS. Uh, I don't care about logo. I'm actually curious what this register service worker is. Man, there's a lot of junk in here. But anyway, we're not doing this type of application, so we don't need to worry about it. it. I'm actually, Service Worker might help you even if you're not doing that type of application, so maybe this is bad that I'm deleting it. Um, it doesn't shouldn't change your code at all, so you can leave it in if you like. Um, it shouldn't change really anything. We need to import, oops, we're importing app. You'll notice though, I don't have ESLint set up. That's, you know what, that's okay. We won't set it up. That'll take extra time. Uh, maybe a different video, I'll set up ESLint. Logo, we don't need. App.css, we don't need. Good. This is good. Make sure, let's make sure everything's still rendering. Okay, it does. Awesome. All right, let's get into React Router, guys. Yarn, add, react, router, and let's just grab Apollo client while we're here. And is there any other library I need? Uh, I think for this, is there an installation to talk about? No, it doesn't talk about what we need. We want to just do a sure, simple example. It's going to take us to GitHub? No. Um, we just want to see the setup. I don't want to see all this stuff. General, here we go. Here, actually, this is what the page I want to see queries. Okay, React Apollo is what it's called. It's not Apollo Client. React Apollo. All right, cool. So we're gonna add those. What I like to do is create a routes folder and store all my routes in there. And we'll have an index route. And for this app.js, app.js and index.js can be the same thing. We don't need two separate ones, two separate pages, because this is basically just that. Get rid of you, get rid of you. Put React here. And really, this should be a uh, just a function, right? A pure function. And really, we should just say export. We don't even need to export default. Cons app is equal to, and we're going to do this. And we don't need any of this. So the only thing we need on this page is this. And now we can eat, delete app.js. Cool. So here we're going to import, import routes from routes and we're going to render routes here and in routes we're going to export default and we're going to have all routes here so we're going to have two two routes really three routes we're going to have auth.js we're going to have login.js that should be uppercase and we should have register.js. All right. Bam, bam, bam. So we're going to import. Oh, guys, the thing about React Router is you actually don't install React Router anymore. From React Router 4, I mean, you should just yarn remove React Router. What you actually install now is React Router DOM. I forgot about that. As you'll see when we go here, uh, should it have basics. Does it have uh, installation? Quick start. I mean, I already, yeah, see how it says React Router DOM? That's what you need. So yarn add React Router DOM. 
and then we're just going to create a basic route. You can just copy this and we're going to get rid of all pretty much all that stuff. And we're going to import react from react. I just want to get rid of that. I just want to really just want this import, right? All right. Save me a little bit of code writing. Okay, so we have our base router here and we're going to do a switch. So we need to import switch. Switch just means one of these is going to be rendered at a time. So route exact, we're going to have login. All of these should be exact. We're going to have login, register, and we're going to have auth. And here we're going to have import our three guys. So auth from auth. And log in here, register. All right. In our component, we have auth. And we want to actually use the render function because it's going to give us some props. So we can do auth and we can pass the props and You'll see why this is useful. We're gonna get, get like some things to be able to redirect from different pages and stuff, which you would not get if you use the component. All right, and this guy as well. Render props, and I, I was not paying attention. I'm not matching these up at all. We'll do that in a second. My bad. So register props. So don't follow along with this part. We're not doing it right. So here, this one should go with register. This one should go with login. They, they should match up, guys, which was what makes sense. But for whatever reason, my brain died for a few seconds. And I switched them up. OK. And we should be good now. All right, cool. So those are all good to go. So we're done with React Router. Now we just need to import. I like to put that guy at the bottom. Let's give him like a separate line because he's not really kind of an import. Apollo provider. We're actually not using Redux. Um, and I think, do we need to use Redux? I think Apollo Provider uses Redux internally, and I am not sure, can't remember if we need to also install Redux. I don't think so. I think it comes with its own thing, and it'll be fine. OK, so, so that's from React Apollo. And you just wrap your whole component in this Apollo Provider. And so, and oh, we need to actually set up the client here. So we're done with you pretty much. We'll come back in a second. Um, queries. We need to set up this guy. So set up an options. We need to set up an Apollo client, which is this. So which is these two lines. So we're going to copy you. Bam. Copy you too. And again, we're going to like trim some of this code out. We don't need you. We can put you here. We don't need that. Oh, and this stuff should go after imports. Okay, so we're creating a client. That's good. We're creating a network interface. Mine is localhost 3000 slash GraphQL. You want to point that to where your uh, server is at. That's where mine is. It uh, looks like we're creating another client, which would be this, and we just pass the client here. I will come back and do the middleware I was talking about in the previous video. We can close that. Um, that's okay, that's set up. So really let's start with the register page, I suppose. So import react from react. Now register class um, it's going to be a react.component and this is going to extend so I'm going to render 
And I just want to test to make sure everything's all good. So we're just going to say register and make sure the sky actually shows stuff on the screen because we've been making lots of changes. Could easily do something wrong. React DOM is not defined. Okay, that's always fun. So yarn. Usually I just run yarn to fix that thing. It's when yarn messes things up basically. And also, yeah, never mind. Yarn did not mess up anything. We just need to do actually import React DOM from React DOM, I think. Sorry, we don't need to run that. All right, cool. So we're gonna go to slash register. We don't have anything uh, to put on that page. That's why. Um, cannot read property location of undefined. So it could be a React router thing. Let's make sure we're doing switch right. I think I'm doing switch right. Redirects, custom links, I believe, route config maybe? Codes quick switch. Switch and you put routes in it. Do you still use a router with switch maybe? Yeah, you do. I, I don't know what this error is. Type error read property location of undefined. This looks like a React router thing. Um, I kind of want to comment these out to see if it, yeah. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to say h1 high. If high shows up, that means it's a React router thing. Okay, yep. So our React router is messed up in some way. Let's fix it. React router DOM, router switch. Is it because I need, I'm passing props. I think, lo oh, login and register. We're actually rendering those, I think, kind of. Well, we are rendering them. So we actually need to put stuff here. And auth too. We can't just leave them blank. And we'll come and fill those out later. Okay. Looks like we're still getting that same thing. And if I go to say login, I assume it's still there. Uh, location property, so. Well, when these kind of problems pop up, what I like to do is just copy the basic example and make sure the basic example actually works. So we're gonna comment out, oops this and we're going to export default right here and we don't need all this jazz we really only want some routes and I believe I have to wrap this with a div just because react route is kind of picky now um, paths we're gonna call this A, B, C. And this will be login, register, and auth. And ooh, same, same thing. So our component is somehow messed up. So we're, we're actually copying the React Router example. We're passing our own component in. I wonder, so our component, shh, it's not the component that's messed up, right? So to make sure it's not our my component, which I don't think it is, what you can do is just render the component. So login. And now, See if that does anything. Okay. Okay, so we're we're doing a really silly error here. I've used React Router just like this before. So there's something really silly that we're doing that's slightly different. Router. Oh. 
You idiot. So we're this should be browser router. Hee <laughs> hee. They changed the name of it. I didn't change the name to do the as because I didn't want to do as. Now we're gonna be good to go. Yep, okay. Now with register here, well, let's just bust this guy out real quick. So state um, username, email, password, is admin. This is going to look all familiar. False, um, on change, this is going to take an event. And we are just going to say const value is equal to e.target.checked if e.target.checked is a thing. So we're checking if it is equal to undefined. If it is, we say e.target.value, otherwise it's checked. And then we're going to set this set, set state. And we're going to say e.target dot name is equal to value. If you don't know what this on change function is doing, you'll see soon enough. We're going to create some um, input fields. So let's go to our ant design here. Input. And let's grab you. Whoa. We don't need it. So we are going to use input here. So I'll put this in a div. Input name. And the name here is going to match up with what we want the state to be. Then we're going to pass the on change to input. And it's going to know which one to update in our set state based on the name we pass here. E.target name matches up here. So username, username. Um, on change is equal to that. And create that couple one of these. Email, password. We don't need any more than that. And the type of this guy is password. Let's make sure three are rendering. If we go to register. Variable type stuff, okay. That's good. We want to set the value is equal to this dot state dot username. And the value of this is equal to this dot state dot email. Okay, we're typing on the edge of the screen here. Let's pull it back in. It's not getting auto formatted quite as nicely because we don't have ESLint set up. Will it format the rest? No, it won't. Okay, so we have value here and we want to set, okay, yeah, email. And then with our input here, we want to grab and say value is password. Refresh. And now when I'm, okay, it doesn't even let us click here. Let's see what's going on. Um, something did not work. Okay, see me clicking here? Straight nothing. What the heck just happened? Okay, I think I broke things with, I have this plugin called uh, CVim. Let's disable it for this domain. Refresh, I think that possibly broke it. Yeah, what that is is Vim for uh, false, false. Uh, it's Vim for Chrome. Okay, so we're getting false for the value. So e.target is equal to undefined. 
do this. So console.log e.target.checked. So checked is actually defined here. That's funny. Oh, I spelled target wrong. And the reason we're doing that is because we want to do checkboxes later. So e.target.checked is just false. You know what? We're just going to do this slightly differently. I thought I did exactly like this on the other one. Screw this. We're going to say if e.target.name is equal to is admin. We're just going to handle that differently. So this is for checkboxes. This is for non checkboxes. For non checkboxes, it's just e.target.value. Keep forgetting the R. All right, that works. We have an error. You can't read target or the value of undefined. Password, email, name, password. Notice how these are all the same. So why would one break? Okay, see, that type's just fine. That's fine. Wait, how did I break things before? Okay, don't know why I was getting an error. I didn't change any code. All right, so that's good. Let's go to checkbox. So import radio is it, or is it actually do they get their own? I know I just did this, but I can't remember where the checkbox is. Checkbox. And we can clump these. All right, so on change, we'll say we're going to have, say, admin question mark. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. So on change is going to call this dot on change. Same as before, and it's going to pick up on the name that we have, which is is admin. And then we're going to say checked is equal to this dot state dot is admin. All right, didn't like it. So let's make sure oh we actually need to set the state here. E.target.name, E.target.checked. That's what it is for checkboxes. Refreshes. And we're good. And then button will be our last thing, which is just button. Import it, grab it here, type primary, and then on click, we're going to say, uh, we don't care about the event, so we're just going to say, actually, yes, we do. We do care. No, we don't because it's not in a form. Um, we care about it in a form, so we prevent redirection. So we could do e.prevent default, but here we don't care because it's not inside a full form. So on submit. So on submit here. Uh, on submit, here we're going to put in nothing and we're just going to do console.log this.state. All right. Should drop that to another line. Cool. Let's do a BR here. So you guys saw in the console, it is good. 
we're going to get rid of you here and we're going to say const mutation I'm just going to call it and we're going to put our GraphQL mutation there and we're going to say const we're going to say export default GraphQL passing in our mutation and then calling register and that's going to import GraphQL tag and GraphQL from React Apollo. Here we're going to do our register mutation. If I come over here, it has our register. Actually, does it have? Yeah, that's fine. We'll just rewrite it real quick. It doesn't take long. Username. So we're going to create variables here for a sub username, which is an optional string. Email, which is a, a sorry, we need to put dollar signs, which is non nullable. Same with password. And then there's a Boolean, which doesn't actually matter. And when I say it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if it is true or false or if they uh, specify it, null or not. And now register, username, pass in the username. And now is admin. And we just gonna grab the ID, same as last time, we don't care if, uh, we don't need a return value, we just want to know if it succeeded or not. So that adds a mutation to our props. So we can say right here, this.props.mutate, not mutation, mutate. Pass in, pass in our variables, which is this.state variables, which we get from what we submit the form. And we can we can just get the response back and show you guys that we actually get something. So let's await the response and we can make this an async function and console.log response. Okie dokie. So my favorite user, his name is Bob. He goes by Bob at Bob.com and his password is that. He is not going to be an admin. All right, username of string in position expected string bang sign. Oh, we're enforcing string in our schema, so we just need to make this mandatory. So we're gonna have to re-enter Bob, 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 Bob. Bob, 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 Validation error. That's new. I actually have no idea what this validation error is. Let's come back to our backend, see what's going on. Insert into user. Oh, hee <laughs> hee. I already created Bob in our database. Let's do Tim. Tim at Tim.com. Tim. And bam, that's our return object. We created Bob. I mean, Tim. Okay guys, I was gonna just like code out everything, the login and the other stuff, but I'm actually getting exhausted. So I'm just gonna pause here um, and split up into two videos. So we did register, we did a lot of stuff here. I'm gonna put this code on GitHub. Um, the next pages are gonna be super quick because it's basically a copy and paste from this register stuff. So thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for that next video.